welcome Dr. Ken Fraser. I'm very pleased to have you on the show. It's a pleasure to be back talking with you. Situation in Taiwan, who seems currently very pressing and also dangerous. The situation in Taiwan, in and around Taiwan, I should say, is getting very, very serious, very dangerous. Um, and the reason is that uh, if you think of the large strategic position, um, there's Taiwan is probably not able to defend itself against the People's Liberation Army from the mainland. If the PLA decides to take over Taiwan, they probably will be able to do that uh, within uh, estimates vary, but um, down to uh, several days. It would take a few days for them to launch a, a massive short uh, move, uh, military operation to take over the island. Then what happens is uh, that the US policymakers and others in the Western world, including Australia and probably Canada as well, but the US would be the main group, they have to decide whether they then want to uh, go and try and push the People's Liberation Army, the communists out of Taiwan, which would be something that they would have to prepare for and it would take, uh, be likely to take some time and they would be able to do it, but it would be costly for them, uh, very costly. They would quite likely uh, lose one or two of their aircraft carriers and they would be very likely to lose some of their very expensive uh, aircraft. And then there's also the problem, of course, of China's intercontinental ballistic missiles, uh, nuclear weapons, that uh, the US would have to calculate a, a risk, a high risk of the Chinese uh, firing nuclear weapons at their major cities. Um, you know, so the, the equation is, would the US be willing to lose San Francisco or to put Los Angeles on the line uh, in order to drive the PLA out of Taiwan? This is the calculation that President Xi will be making. Uh, and I think he's probably updating this calculation on a daily basis. Um, uh, and so that's the, the danger is that he comes to the stage where he thinks, yes, we can take over Taiwan in a short enough time that it'll be a fait accompli uh, and that the, nobody can prevent us from doing that. That's the thing. All they could do is threaten to push them back out again once it was done. And uh, if she is making the calculation saying the Americans won't do that, they won't be willing to risk their aircraft carriers, they certainly won't be willing to risk their uh, cities, and so they won't try to do that. It would, they would, he would be counting on the US to say, to make a lot of noise and a lot of protests, but not actually to do anything uh, kinetic, they say, no guns and bombs. Um, now, whether the US does in fact react like that is another question. If the, uh, China was indeed to fire a nuclear weapon at uh, one of America's big cities, then they could expect immediate and devastating retaliation. So the balances of risk are what, uh, what's important here. And we just have to trust, uh, we have to hope that President Xi uh, is not actually president of the national, he's the uh, general secretary uh, of the Communist Party. She is uh, going to make a cautious uh, calculation of risk or whether he's going to be, thinks he's running out of time and he has to do something quickly in order to make his mark on history. That's the danger. That'll be the dangerous thing. Because then nobody knows what will happen exactly then. There are calculations of risk, but nobody's sure exactly how it will come out. Do you think this was almost unavoidable, what happened, given the economic, the growing economic strength of China? No, I don't think it was inevitable. I think uh, if Deng Xiaoping could be alive to see what's happening, that he would uh, be worried. <laughs> um, I think that there's a very important element is uh, uh, Xi Jinping's 
own personality that he himself is in a hurry. He wants to make his mark on history. He's consolidated himself in the leadership uh, for the time being. Um, he's extended the term limits so that he can stay in power for, a, for another term, a third term. Um, and so th that's the dangerous thing is his personality. So it's not really inevitable, um, although it always is a danger uh, that, you know, it's a very old um, situation of a rising power uh, facing an existing uh, hegemonic power. There's a lot of uh, talk goes on about the inevitability of this, that, and the next thing. Myself, I don't think it was inevitable. The Chinese could have gone with a different leader um, and they might have, uh, you know, gained more economic uh, stability in within the system, uh, the world system, um, which is what they did for 30 years and they did it very well and it made a very big difference. Now, it's since the economic crisis, it's kind of flattened out a bit, um, but Xi Jinping has consolidated himself in power and the person at the top makes the difference to uh, the policy <laughs> that's there. So who knows, he might get uh, um, overthrown by some other power source, but I don't think that's going to know. I haven't heard anything that indicates that that's going to happen. So it's very dangerous. So I think any clash between the two superpowers will be devastating, I think, not just for their country, but for the world as a whole. Now, do you think, um, because still the US spending on military is still, I think, like yeah. double it's three than times China. What the, yeah, it's three times what the uh, Chinese spend. That's true, but they have a much bigger commitment. They have commitments all over the world, uh, whereas the Chinese are, are committed to uh, defending their borders and projecting power around their borders, whereas the American system, the American military really underpins uh, the whole global system. <laughs> um, I'm exaggerating a little bit there, but not very much. Uh, they've got commitments in Ukraine, in the Mediterranean, in the Middle East, in uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They've got uh, forces in Germany, in Japan. Uh, well, Japan obviously would be uh, also closely involved if any uh, fighting was to break out over Taiwan. Um, but so the Americans do have more power. And, and if it was restricted to a conventional war, so if we could take uh, nuclear missiles out of the game, um, the Americans would win. I think it's fair enough to predict that. Uh, I think the people of Taiwan would resist occupation by the PLA uh, and they would welcome assistance from the US to uh, kick the communists out of Taiwan. Um, but of course, and, and the Americans would win that fight, but they would, it would be difficult and they would lose uh, significant casualties uh, you know, I don't like to predict anything too firmly, but I think that's a fairly easy one to predict or to calculate. But the thing is, we can't take nuclear weapons out of the equation. Uh, they're there and they're, that is a very, very dangerous uh, risk for whoever's going to be in that uh, competition. Um, the, the good thing we can think about that, though, is that it's the worst case scenarios would prove to be such an appalling disaster, mainly for China, it has to be said. Um, as I said, if, if they fired a, a nuclear missile against one of the US's cities, they would immediately be obliterated by hundreds of re, uh, uh, nuclear missiles fired in return. Well, they, so they might be, certainly that would be a danger that they would have to uh, take into account. So the escalations look uh, more and more risky as they go on. And so, as I said before, it's, it really all comes down to the calculations of risk uh, that are being undertaken by both sides, but particularly by Xi Jinping, who, after all, doesn't have to do anything. He, he doesn't have anything on the line except his own uh, self-esteem, I guess, to put it politely. Um, because he wants to be the one who reunifies China. Um, but 
uh, he's playing a very, very risky game and he doesn't have to, that's the thing. And there'll be people around him who are saying, we don't have to play this game. We can uh, get along perfectly well and with focusing on economic growth and on uh, making friends around the world and diplomacy. There's no particular need to uh, go to force of arms. Um, so, and, and the risks of doing that are phenomenal. So it's hard to believe that they would do that, but other people have done uh, very ridiculously stupid things uh, in history before and taken uh, in very big risks before uh, in history. So you never really know what's going to happen. Dr. Ken Fraser, always great to have you on the yes. show. Thank you very much. Same to you. Dr. Ken Fraser. <laughs>